Hi there, in this video I'm going to have a go at making the eccentric strap and eccentric sheave for the Stuart 10V. So the eccentric sheave is made out of a piece of mild steel bar which is 5 eighths of an inch in diameter. So what I've done is uh, I've put it on the uh, lathe in the three jaw chuck and just faced off the end and now I've marked up a centre line and then uh, perpendicular to that um, I've, I've marked up another line which is 3 30 seconds of an inch offset from the centre. So what I need to do now is to uh, put it on the lathe and centre it on that point there and then I need to turn a boss which is 7 16 in diameter and then drill and ream a hole 9 30 seconds of an inch um, which is where the crankshaft will fit. Well, I've uh, centre drilled on the offset and what I've decided to do first of all is drill the hole so I'm going to use various size drill bits to get up to eventually uh, 6.8 millimetres and then I'm just going to ream through um, with this 9 30 seconds of an inch reamer um, now I'll drill uh, to a depth of I think round about 15 millimetres which should be adequate um, I'll do all that off camera. So this boss needs to be cut to 5 30 seconds of an inch deep and I've set the depth stop on this side and what I'll do is I'll cut in um, thou uh, 10 thou increments and the diameter uh, needs to coincide with that outside edge there so I'll keep on cutting until I just touch the outside edge that's the plan anyway Gradually taking shape. So this is my diagram, obviously not to scale. Um, this is the boss that I've just cut. And what I need to do now is to use a parting tool to cut a sixteenth of an inch wide groove here. And looking at the plan I think it's got to be about a sixteenth of an inch deep as well. Um, so here I need to uh, leave a gap of five sixty-fourths of an inch. So then I'll cut the groove and then another 5 64ths of an inch gap and I'll part it off. Once I've parted it off I'll then uh, tap to 7BA here. Now parting off, um, so I'll be cutting round about 600 RPM and I'll be using the uh, power feed on the cross slide. Well, that seems to have worked out okay. Uh, what I should have remembered to do be before fully parting off 
is I should have used a lathe tool just to take this hedge off here. Um, so I've got to do that. Um, so I've just used a bit of wet and dry just to go around the edge like that. And I've uh, cleaned that end up with some wet and dry by doing that. Uh, but so far looking good. So all I need to do is to uh, tap it to 7BA. But I'll do that off camera. So actually I've uh, decided to tap the sheave in the area on the boss which is furthest away from this edge here. Um, I, I guess that's the right place to do it. Um, now unfortunately my centre drill isn't long enough um, to be able to just centre it so I'm just going to have to uh, drill with this 2.1mm drill bit and uh, fingers crossed it will be okay. So that's the uh, sheave finished, so now it's time to get on and machine the strap. So this strap is shaped like a banana, so I need to give it a little bit of thought before I uh, start any work on this. So this setup uh, probably uh, demonstrates the problem in a bit more detail. Um, on the left hand side here there's far more material than on the right. And I think from a machining point of view I need to even that up uh, so it's centred uh, on, the, on the base of the shaft. Now as you can see at the top, the, the left hand um, side is far more biased to the left. Um, so there's a far bigger gap here than there is there as opposed to a bigger gap here than there is there. So I think before I do any machining what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the vise, apply some heat and see if I can sort of bend it sort of this way a little bit. Well I've applied a bit of heat and uh, I've managed to get this top bit over to the right a bit more so it's a bit more sort of symmetrical and in proportion really. Um, so I'm a bit happier with that. So I think what I'll do to start off with, I'll look to machine these sides here, get that nice and straight on the milling machine and then I'll switch it round, put it on the parallels and machine that. And then we'll decide where to go from there. So I've tidied the sides up with a mixture of uh, milling and hand filing and the thick edge is 0 0.087 to the side of the upright and the thinner edge is 0 0.070. Now the actual target um, I'm looking for is 7 30 seconds of an inch which is 0.219 but it's actually at the moment 0 0.30 so for some maths so this side is 17 thou over size so if I take 17 thou off here it'll even the sides up and that'll result in the thickness being 0.283 
and my target is 0.219 so the difference being 64 thou so that means I need to take another 32 thou off each side so therefore on the left hand side as it is now I need to take off 32 thou plus 17 thou which is 49 thou and on the right hand side I need to take off 32 thou and hopefully that will result in it in the upright being centred fingers crossed well, I've just taken 17 thou off the thick side and then just measured again and uh, it comes in around about 60 thou oversize which is close to what I originally thought so I'm going to take 30 thou off this side remeasure it and in theory I should be taking 30 thou off the other side if I got my maths right a bit of support here and I've just switched this round and measured both sides as they appear here and this side is 21 thou lower than that side when it's switched round the other way so I think what I need to do then is to switch it back round and take 21 thou off this bottom bit to even it up and then I need to take off an even amount of each of the sides to get down to an eighth of an inch so that's the plan so I calculate 30 thou off each side of this small end to bring it down an eighth of an inch That's a lot better. Reasonably happy with that. So the size of this large hole needs to be 5 eighths of an inch. So that's 0.625 of an inch. And it's currently uh, 508. 508. So it's 117 thou out. Um, so from a, a radius point of view that's half of that isn't it? So it's 55 or thereabouts. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up reaming it um, so my target needs to be I think about 10 thou or 15 thou under size so for, if I aim for uh, 0.610 um, I think I'll be okay then reaming it so that's what I'll do and I'm going to cut in increments of 5 I don't know what these equate to so I've only used it couple of times before uh, but I suppose I'll soon find out <laughs> I'm going to use a fine feed and it's running at 870 at the moment Well the diameter's worked out to be at 0.613 so I'm quite happy with that so we've only got uh, 12 thou to come off with the reamer. Well this is a hand reamer so um, I'm just using the fine feed very slightly and turning it 
Now I'm not sure whether my vise is going to be wide enough at the bottom. Um, so I guess I'll soon find out. Well the reaming seems to have worked out okay and the vise was uh, just had enough sort of like depth uh, to enable the tapered reamer to uh, ream out to uh, 5 eighths of an inch. So anyway, um, I've uh, moved the uh, table across uh, 1 and 15 sixteenths of an inch which is 1.937 uh, which equates to 49.21 millimetres so I've just used the dial uh, on the table just to move it that way 49.21 millimetres um, I've just lightly centre drilled uh, I'm going to have to take this quite steady uh, because you know the support here isn't fantastic uh, but I've lightly centre drilled it and now what I need to do is drill it 2.6 millimetres in diameter which is 7BA clear So before making the cut here, I need to drill a 7BA clear hole, um, that is 2.6mm in diameter, right through, which will hold the uh, nut and bolt. Uh, now I've lined it up by um, running the drill down the side uh, to making sure that it's perpendicular. Uh, it looks okay, so I've... Um, just eyeballed it, centre drilled, and now I'll drill through. So while I'm here I might as well uh, drill and tap um, the thread for the screw um, that goes through the bottom and uh, into the groove of the sheave. Well, there's a requirement to drill a little oil hole here. Um, but as you can see with this big chuck, I just can't get close to it. So I think what I'll do is uh, put it in the other vise and use the uh, Proxon um, to uh, try and do a hand drill. Uh, but I'll do that off camera. Well, the uh, Proxon worked a treat, a little oil hole there. And I'll just um, get the hand reamer and I'll just run it through by hand just to take any burrs off where the drill holes come, have come through. Um, then what I'll do off camera is I'll cut the slit in there and I'll just machine the end of the screw. Well, I just thought I'd uh, show you this uh, little jeweler saw. I've, I've never used it before. Um, I thought I'd use it to cut the, the little slit. It seems to work very well. I think it's good on brass. Uh, not great on uh, mild steel. Well, in reality, the uh, screw uh, was a bit difficult to machine. Um, but uh, I decided to uh, just one, use one of these little files just to file it down a little bit. This is one of my father's files so it must be at least 50 years old. Could do with another set really. 
Well, the set screw was quite fiddly actually, uh, but I've managed to file it down to the correct size so the sheave uh, turns nicely. Um, but before we get onto that, um, from a health and safety point of view, I tend to use um, that from my wood turning days, but it's quite clumsy and uh, gets in the way a lot and steams up. And uh, I was looking on eBay the other day and I came across these and they go over your normal specs. Now mine are very focal and uh, I've always had problems finding something that will fit over. And these are absolutely superb. Uh, I'm really impressed. They call them no cry. Um, and you could, once you've got them on, you forget you're wearing them. They're really, they're, they're that good. Um, so I'm going to send off for a couple more pairs. Because uh, they're so good, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, miss out if they stop making them. Um, so, if anybody's got the same problem like me, I, I really recommend them. But anyway, um, coming back to this, um, it really seems to uh, turn nicely. Um, happy with the result. I'm, I might, um, before final assembly, um, use a bit of wet and dry to uh, tidy up the brass. There's, there's some machining marks still on it, uh, so that needs sorting out really. Uh, but apart from that, it looks good. It looks good, and uh, we're getting very, very close now. Um, I think the last thing to complete now is the valve, the valve rod, and fittings. Um, so in my next video, um, I hope to make the valve rod, uh, the extra bits and bobs, and hopefully we uh, should get a trial run on on air. So it's getting exciting now. So, uh, hope to see you later.